Hey everyone, welcome to our latest 3ds Max Quick Tip, a series of videos from the Pixel Academy that contain handy hints and productivity boosters for the 3ds Max application. In this video, we have a cool tip for you regarding a little bit of underutilized particle flow functionality that a number of users seem unaware exists. You see, whilst the initial birth event in a 3ds Max particle flow gives us the ability to set the overall number of particles being used at the start of an effect, what the system doesn't give us is any help in terms of figuring out just where those particles are in the flow at any given point in time. Colour coding the particles for each discrete event can help a little in a visual sense, but that really only helps us see when a particle has passed from one event to another. But again, no specific information is given us regarding the number of particles in any given event at any given point in time. Using a slight variation on one of the preset flows that come preloaded with 3ds Max these days though, flows originally created by 3ds Max VFX wizard Alan McKay, we can take a look at how we can actually enable that functionality for ourselves. First of all though, let's run through a playback of the effect that we have here, which as you can see, gives us a sequential splash effect that is spawning a number of colour coded particles. and. If I just hit the 6 key to open up particle view, you can see the flow that is creating this effect. In fact, if I just pause the playback, you can clearly see that we currently have no way of knowing how many specific particles are sitting in each of the discrete events that we have at this moment in time. To give ourselves that extra feedback then, let's come to the options menu and from down in the track update section, enable the particle count option that we have. As we scrub through the animation now, we not only have the colour coding of the events to help us track particle movement, but we also get a live update in the header of each event that reports the specific number of particles sitting inside it. Meaning, we can even track the exact point in time at which the final particle exits a particular event. A very handy option indeed. Well, that's it for this particular quick tip, but if you are a 3ds Max user who would like to get a complete introduction to, or perhaps even just a refresher course for the tools and workings of the Particle Flow system, maybe I could recommend checking out my Up and Running with Particle Flow course found over in the LinkedIn Learning online training library. And if you would like to see more comprehensive Particle Flow training appear here on the Pixel Academy, do be sure to let us know. Until our next quick tip then, this is Brian Bradley saying take good care of yourselves and bye for now.